Hi everyone, today I'm going to be tracing a single while and for loop using a logic table here. So I'll be explaining how we can use a logic table um, to explain our thinking um, and show its use when it comes to tracing loops, say in an exam um, or in an assignment. Um, so I'm going to start with a while loop here. I've got this while loop here. Um, I've got an integer a which is 6, I've got result which is 1, so I've already added those values here. Um, and then my condition is that while a must be greater than 0. So when you're creating logic tables, you want to have a column for each variable that you have, um, and then a column for each conditional you have. So we only have two variables and a single conditional here, so it's quite a straightforward logic table. Um, but I'll show you later on a more complex logic table and how you would um, deal with that. So we're going to start um, tracing our code. So as I said before, I've already filled in my values for um, A and result, which is with this initializing here. Um, and what we want to do is for every value of A, because we can see that A is being updated here, um, for every value of A, we want to trace um, and see whether our conditional returns true or false. So the first time we enter our loop, we get to line three um, and we say while a is greater than zero. At this point, a is six. Six is greater than zero. So we'll enter true. I'm just gonna write t in this column here. Um, and if that condition is true, then we know that we enter the loop. So if we enter the loop and we get to line four, um, and line four says result is equal to result times a. So we are updating the value in the result column with the current value of a, which is six. So result is equal to result times a. So we're multiplying by six. So now our result is equal to six. Um, so we've done line four, we get to line five, um, and a is now equal to a minus one. So the next time um, we loop around, a will be equal to 6 minus 1, which is 5. So we update that here. Um, and at this point, we've gotten to line 6, which is the end of our loop, um, which means that we'll be moving back up to line 3, where we do the second loop iteration. Um, and so our second row here represents the second iteration. Um, and the current value of result is 6. So we want to update that there. Um, so again, we check our condition, uh, which says a is greater than zero, and a is currently five, so we're checking with this. Five is greater than zero, that's true. So we enter our loop and we head to line four. Um, line four updates the value of result by multiplying it by a. Um, and again, at this point in time, a is five. So we want to multiply by five here, and now result is 30. We get to line 5, a is equal to a minus 1, so a is equal to 5 minus 1, which is 4. And then we get to line 6, which is the end of our loop, um, so we head back up to line 3 and do our third iteration of the loop, where a is 4. Um, and the last update we did to result, it was equal to 30, so this time we go around the loop, result is 30. And we check our conditional again. Is 4 greater than 0? That's true. Oops. Line 4, we've entered our loop. Line 4 says result is equal to result times a. Well, a is currently 4, so we're timesing by 4. So now result is 120. Line 5 says a is equal to a minus 1. 4 minus 1, we get 3. We get to the end of our loop on line 6, and we head back up to line 3 to check our condition. Is 3 greater than 0? Yes. Um, I forgot to update result. It was 120. Um, so line 4 says result is equal to result times a. a is currently 3. And line 5 says a is equal to a minus 1. So a is now equal to 2. We head back to the top. We check our condition. Is 2 greater than 0? It's true. Result was previously 360. So now we head to line 4. 
result is equal to result times a, a is 2. And then a is equal to a minus 1. And I'll remember to update my result this time. We head back to the top. 1 is greater than 0, that's true. So result is equal to result times a. And a is equal to a minus 1. We head back to the top of our loop. We check our condition. 0 is greater than 0. Um, and this is false. So we've finally terminated our loop um, because our condition is false, which means we're going to stop now. Um, and then, which means we jump down to line 7 and we do whatever is in the rest of our code. And in this case, it's print line result. So what will be printed here is the value of the result. And that value is 720 because that was our last result value. So that's how you trace a while loop. Um, but if you have a variable that you're updating, a condition and an update in your while loop, that can be easily translated into a for loop. So I'm going to show you how to trace a for loop as well. So I've got this loop here. I've got my logic table here that's going to help me trace it. Um, and I've got three columns. I've got a my i variable. I've got my condition, i is less than or equal to 16. Uh, and then I have my result. And I've given those values already with their initialized values. So here it's very similar to the while loop, except everything is in this loop header here. So um, let's start tracing this one. We've got our first line sets result to zero initially. And then line two, we've got i is equal to 1, so I've updated that. We have our condition. And the important thing to note here is that this increment here, this update that happens, happens at the end of the loop. So this isn't the first thing that you do. You don't do this straight away. As soon as you get to this ending bracket here, only then do you update i. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So let's start tracing. We've got i is 1. We want to check our condition is 1 less than or equal to 16. Um, that's true. So we enter our loop, we go to line 3, and we say result is equal to result plus i. And i is currently 1, so we're plusing 1. And only now that we've gotten to line 4 do we apply our increment, which is i is equal to i times 2. So 1 times 2, we get 2. And at this point, we loop back around to line 2 and we check our condition, which is if i is less than or equal to 16. So i is currently 2. Is 2 less than or equal to 16 is true. Result was previously 1. Um, and we head to line 3. Result is equal to result plus i. i is currently 2. So we're plusing 2. And now our result is 3. We get to the end of our loop. And only now do we apply our increment, now that we're at line 4. Um, i is equal to i times 2, so 2 times 2, we get 4. And then we head back to the top and do our condition. Uh, so is 4 less than or equal to 16? That's true. Result was previously 3. We go to line 3, which says result is equal to result plus i. i is currently 4, so we're adding 4. Now result is 7. We get to the end, and now we're at the end, we can apply our update. So i is equal to i times 2, 4 times 2, we get 8. So 8 is less than or equal to 16 is true again. Um, result was 7, and line 3 says that we're adding the value of i, which is currently 8. So now it's 15. We've gotten to the end, we're applying our update i is equal to i times 2, 8 times 2 is 16. So 16 less than or equal to 16, that's true because 16 is equal to 16. Um, so we enter our loop, our result value was previously 15, um, and what are we doing inside our loop? 
on line 3, result is equal to result plus i. So 15 plus 16, and we get 31. We get to the end, i is equal to i times 2. So 16 times 2, we get 32. We check our condition. 32 is less than or equal to 16. That's false. Um, and it's important when you're doing these questions to have this terminating value here and this false value here um, just to show that you can recognize when a loop finishes, when um, the condition is no longer true so that we'd skip over the loop, we're finished and we'd go to line five um, and continue with the rest of our code, which in this case is printing out result, which is 31. So that's how you do your for loop here. Um, I've got one last example, which is also in the notes. Um, when you have a multi-variable conditional loop, um, we said initially that when we're creating a logic table, we want a column for each variable and each condition. So here what we've got is we've got a place for every variable to keep track of the variable. Um, we've got a column for each individual Boolean here because this is a Boolean and this is a Boolean. And then together they also make a Boolean when you end them together. Um, so you want to do the left side, the right side, um, and then the Boolean of both of those together. And then you've got your result, which is another variable here. Um, so if you've got a loop that you want to trace that has more than one variable, more than one conditional, then you'll want, um, need to add some more columns there. So that is how you trace a single loop